Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, we will see how we can use Yolo V8 for traffic lights detection and color recognition. So let's get started and explore the code now. So in the front of your screen, you can see the data set. So we will be using this data set for this project. So here we have the traffic light data set. The data set consists of around 1000 images and we have three different classes, green, red, and yellow. So like when there is a green light, we have a class of uh, green. And when there is a red light, we have a, we have a label of red. And when there is a yellow light, we have a label of yellow. Okay, so if I click on this sample image to show you, so now you can see over here, we have the green line over here. So we have the label as green. And when we have the, the red light, like you can see over here, so we have the label of red over here. And if we go ahead, um, let me show you the yellow light over here. If we see, so if you can see over here, um, I think where is the yellow light? Okay, so this is a red light as well. So let me show you if we have the yellow light over here. So now you can see that here we have the yellow light. So here we have the label of yellow as well. Okay, so we have three different labels like red, green, and yellow. When there is a red light, we have the label red. When there is a green light, we have the label green. And when there is a yellow light, traffic light, we have the label as yellow. So we have three different classes, green, red, and yellow. We have the around 1000 images in our data set and our data set is distributed among train validation and test set over here. And here we have the overview of data set. So you can see over here, if I go over here, so uh, we have applied data augmentation on the training data set images. So using data augmentation, uh, we can increase the size of our data set. So we use data augmentation when we don't have uh, much images on our data set, like we have don't have enough images in our uh, training data set. So we apply data augmentation to increase the size of our data set. Okay, so we will be exporting this data set from RoboFlow into our Google Colab notebook. So let me just first sign in and just, I will be using sign in with Google over here. And then uh, what I will do is just create. So I have uh, I have already created an account on RoboFlow. So I've just signed in. But if you haven't created any account on RoboFlow, you need to create an account first. And then you will be able to export this data set from RoboFlow into your Google, uh, expense notebook over here. So to export this data set, you just need to click on download from here and just select the format as YOLO V5 PyTorch format from here. Uh, basically YOLO V8 and YOLO V5 both were released by Ultra Analytics. So to implement train YOLO V8 on traffic light data set, uh, you can export the data set in YOLO V5 format or YOLO V8 format. Uh, it's uh, on your choice. Basically both will work. Okay, so YOLO V5 PyTorch format and then click on continue. And you just need to copy this from here and you just need to paste this into your Google Colab notebook or in expense notebook. So the data set uh, will be exported from RoboFlow into your expense notebook or Google Colab notebook. Okay. So uh, one thing further I want to tell you, uh, if I just click over here. So for this project, I will be using this expense ID. So you can see over here. So Basically, Expense uh, is a newly, newly launched product and it helps us to train, deploy, and monitor our um, model as well. So it's similar like Google Colab Notebook, but uh, it help, it also helps us to create an API and deploy our API. So these are the additional features which are not in the Google Colab. Okay, so if I go over here, so uh, if you create, a, uh, if you just sign up into the Expense, uh, so you will be able to get the 25 free credits from here and uh, you can uh, upgrade to elite membership and there is a pro membership as well. So it's all your choice. So it's similar to the Google Colab, like the similar uh, things, uh, there they is a similar working like we do in Google Colab. So first of all, you just need to go to the projects from here and you just need, I have already created a project. So if you haven't created a project, you just need to click on create project and write the project name. So here we have, and then you can open the Jupyter Notebook from here. Okay. So just open the Jupyter Notebook from here. And so this might take a few seconds. So it will now load the saved notebook. So I have already uh, prepared the notebook for this project, uh, traffic light project. So you can see over here. 
So, so for this project, I will be using uh, this ultralytics repo, Yolo V8 repo. So I've just uh, forked this repo into my GitHub from here. So you can see over here. So you can use the ultralytics or repo, Yolo V8 repo original link, but I've just forked, forked this repo into my GitHub. You can see over here. So if we go over here, so as we move towards the implementation into the notebook, so in the first step, uh, we will import all the required libraries, like you can see over here, import OS. So I have just added a comment, import OS is used to create a helper variable, which allows us to easily navigate, manages different paths in the code. Okay, so basically using OS library, we create a helping variable, which help us to navigate between different file paths. And then we have glob library. Uh, so glob library basically return all file paths that match a specific pattern. So using glob library, we will use it to plot uh, the output images or the input images as well. Okay, so now we have the uh, from ipython display import image display. So if we want to display any input or output image into our Google Colab notebook, then we need this image library. Okay, so in the first step, we just need to check if we have the access to GPU or not. So if you click over here, expense server, and you can select the Tesla T4 uh, GPU, Tesla V100 GPU. So expense come with uh, comes up with Tesla T4 and Tesla V100 GPU. And you can select the expand py.gpu format as well. And then you just need to click on open file. Okay, so I've just uh, already uh, using this expand server already. So if you just click over here, if you run this cell, so you can see over here that GPU memory usage and it's using currently GPU memory. Okay, so here I'm just using the helper variable, setting the helper variable over here. You can see over here. So now you can, uh, you know that uh, Yolo V8 can be implemented in two ways, like from the source, like by cloning the GitHub repo, like you can see that we can clone this GitHub repo by uh, copying over here and using git clone command or by using the pip install ultralytics. So basically Yolo V8 is the first version of Yolo, which has its own package. So if we use pip install ultralytics, we can easily download the Yolo V8 complete package over here. Okay, so I'm just uh, cloning the GitHub repo over here. You can see over here. So I've just gone over here and just click on copy path and just paste this path over here and adding the git clone from here as well. Okay, so I'm just cloning the GitHub repo over here. So the first step, you just need to clone this GitHub repo. So if you just run this cell, so this will clone the GitHub repo. So this might take few seconds. Okay, so if we see over here, okay now it's loading a bit so you can see that we have the ultralytics uh github repo over here you can see over here okay so the repo is clone uh, now we need to just set the current directory uh, to this ultralytics folder like we want to set uh, our current directory as this ultralytics uh, the downloaded repo which we have downloaded we need to set this our as our current directory ultralytics so i'm just setting this as my current directory then we need to install all the required libraries so here i'm just installing all the required libraries that are necessary to run this script successfully <clears throat> so using pip install minus e dot def i will install all the required libraries so if we, i skip this cap uh, some of the libraries will not be installed okay so like you can see that uh, some libraries are installed by default okay like cborn matplotlib libraries are already by install installed default in the notebook so some by some libraries like hydra library uh, or you can see that jinja2 library these are not installed by default so if you skip this step and when you run the training prediction or validation step you will get the error that following the hydra library is not installed or jinja2 library is not installed so it's necessary that you run this step so this will install all the required libraries that are required to run this script successfully. So by running this cell, pip install minus e dot uh, this will install all the required libraries or the dependencies that are required to run this training validation or the prediction script. Okay. So now here we are just checking if the YOLO V8 installed and it's working fine. So you can see that ultra lotic YOLO V8 is setup is complete and it's working fine. Okay. So now uh, if we go over here, as we are doing traffic light detection and color recognition. So if I go to our here, Ultralytics, one onto this subfolder, and then we go to YOLO. And then if we further go to, um, let me go to V8. And then if we click on detect folder. So 
basically as we are just performing a detection in this case so we need to set uh, this uh, detect folder as our current directory so we just need to click over here copy path and just paste this path over here so we are just setting this folder as our detect folder as our current directory okay so now uh, and then the next step i will download this data set from roboflow into my google colab notebook so just copy this from here and paste copy this from here and just paste this over here which i have done already so you just need to Click Control C and Control B simply over here. Okay, so this will download a data set from RoboFlow into our Google Colab notebook. So in the next step, what we'll do is uh, we will just train our YOLO V8 model, or you can see that we will fine tune our YOLO V8 model on the traffic light data set. So after fine tuning or training the YOLO V8 model on the traffic light data set, we will be able to detect that traffic light and do the color recognition as well. Like it is a green light, yellow light, or the red light, okay? So I'm just training my model on AT box, which you can see over here. So I've already trained the YOLO V8 model on the traffic light data set for AT box, you, you can see the results over here. So here you can see the results. So you can see that uh, we have got the mean average precision with IU 50 as uh, for all the classes as 0 0.983, which is 98.3% and mean average precision with IU 50 to 95 for all the classes is 65.2%. While for the green, red and yellow class, we have the 96.7, 97.4 and 95.5%. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm just repeating the recall. So for the green class, we have the mean average precision with IU50 as 97.6. And for the red class, we have the mean average precision with IU50 as 98.8. And mean average precision with IU50 for the yellow class is 98.6%, while for the uh, mean average precision with IOU, IOU 50 to 95 for the yellow class is 69.7, for the red class is 63%, and for the green class is 62.8%. So the results are quite good. And here we are just checking different uh, folders which we have in our training section. So we can see we have the confusion metrics, we have the F1 curve. Uh, we have the precision curve, we have the recall curve as well. In the results.csv file, we have the model performances after each of the epoch. And in the result.png file, we have the training and validation loss graphs over here as well. So here we have the confusion matrix. So confusion matrix tell us how our model handles different classes. So let me just uh, download this from here and just, just let me just add this over here, okay. So let me just open this confusion matrix image and show you what results do we are getting over here. So now in front of your screen, you can see the confusion matrix. So you can see over here, 96% uh, of times. Uh, so basically confusion matrix tells us how our models handles different classes. So 96% of time when there was a green light, our model detected correctly that there is a green light. Okay, 96% of time when there is a green light, our model detected correctly that there is a green light. While 2% of the times, when there is a green light, our model misclassified it or unable to detect, uh, our model misclassified it as a red light. So while 2% of the times, when there is a green light, our model misdetected as or misclassified it as red light. While 1% of the time, our model misclassified or misdetected as uh, yellow light. While 1% of the time, remaining 1% of the time, when there is a green light, our model is unable to detect anything. Similarly, from here, you can see as well, 97% uh, of the time, our model detected correctly that there is a red light, while 1% of the time, when there is a red light, our model uh, misclassified it as a green light, while 2% of the time, when there is a red light, our model was unable to detect anything, okay? So, if we go to over here in the expense notebook over here, you can see over here, so... Uh, here we have the training and validation loss. So if we see the training and validation loss, we can see that the loss is continuously decreasing. So if I train this model on a higher number of epochs, we can see that uh, the loss will further decrease. Currently we have trained the YOLO V8 model on 80 epochs, but if we train this YOLO V8 model on uh, 150 or 200 epochs, we can say that the loss will further decrease. And uh, here we are just validating the, our 
best model or fine tune yolo v8 model on the traffic light data set so we are just passing over best weights of the model like we have trained the yolo v8 model on the traffic light data set so we are just uh, passing the best weights of the model after training and just validating the model on that uh, validation images so after validating the model on the validation uh, data set images, so we can see that the mean average precision with IOU 50 is obtained as 98.3% and mean average precision with IOU 50 to 95 is obtained as 65.3%, okay? And similarly, uh, we have also obtained the mean average precision with IOU 50 and 50 to 95 for all the other classes as well, green, red, and yellow, and the results are quite good. So now we will uh, just test our model on or uh, do the prediction by passing the best weights of the model on some uh, videos. So I have already tested the model on several videos, like you can see over here. So, uh, so let me show you the output results. What do we get from after testing our Yolo V8 model on different images or videos? So I have already uh, done the prediction on multiple images or videos. So let me show you the results. Uh, so using the predict.py script, we will uh, we will basically test our Yolo V8 model on different images as well as on the videos, okay? So now you can see over here, uh, I'm just downloading a demo video from the Google Drive. So I will basically download a video of traffic light from the pixel site and just place it on my Google Drive and just download the video from the drive into directly my notebook over here and just passing the best weights of the model and here is the video one path and here I'm just setting the confidence scores, okay? So I've done this process on multiple videos and let me show you the results, what do I got, okay? So just let me navigate to my folder where I have this, okay? So if I go over here, uh, let me just share my screen. So you can see that um, here I have multiple images. So let me just play this video first. Okay, so let me just navigate the screen towards this. So now you can see over here. Okay, so now you can see over here, our model is able to detect the traffic light and assign a label that this is a red light. And you can see that one thing you have noticed, uh, when we have a red light, we have the label as the red light you can see here plus we have the bounding box color of the red uh, red color as well like the bounding box color is red as well and we have the label as red light over here you can see over here okay like we have the label of red light and we have the bounding box color red as well so let's see on some other demo video and she see what results do we get okay so let me just navigate my screen towards this video So now you can see over here, if I play this video, so you can see that we are able to detect the traffic light plus we have the bounding box color of the uh, same color as the light as well. Like here we have detected that light light, the bounding box color is also red and you can see over here in some other case, uh, like you can see over here, although it's a yellow light, uh, like you can see over here, we have detected that this is a yellow light and our bounding box color is yellow as well. When we have a detected a green light, our label will be green and we have the bounding box color as green as well. Like you can see, when we have the red light, we have the bounding box color of red and when we have the yellow light, our bounding box uh, color is yellow as well. So this is all from this video tutorial. See you all in the next video tutorial. Till then, bye-bye.